I always had this sense of service. Uh, I kind of got it from my grandfather. Up until his mid 80s, he was still shoveling snow for his neighbors, you know. And so I always kind of looked up to him as a role model. If I could be like one tenth of the man he was, I'd consider that a success. I went to a small little private high school. When you think of my high school, you don't necessarily think of military. Just really had no direction. And so I was looking for something um, to give me kind of that direction in life. And I found that in the military. There's always a, a flotilla of Marines floating around in the uh, Mediterranean and the Pacific. And so I was on the USS Ogden LPD-5 and I was cargo, uh, along with about a thousand other Marines and all of our, um, all of our equipment. Had gotten married at the time and kind of our plans and the military didn't quite match up. So, you know, I honorably was discharged from the Marine Corps and, and then just kind of life happened, you know, uh, school, work, whatnot. Um, the idea of the military kind of popped back up in my head because I had such a great experience with the Marine Corps. While there's no Marine units here in Central Oregon, there is the Oregon National Guard. In 2013, we got a notification that we were going to deploy to Afghanistan. 17 years after I had gotten out of the Marine Corps and the infantry, I found myself right back in the infantry as a squad leader. Uh, at 42 years old, at a totally different stage in my life, um, sitting on a forward operating base. I was with 2nd Platoon uh, as a squad leader for the headquarters element. And I had like seven guys, uh, young, you know, I could probably be their dad. And, you know, I was responsible for them. So my mission was bring them home. We had one firefight that um, it was our lead truck, uh, hit an IED. We were just kind of driving in this open field and all of a sudden there's this huge explosion right in front of us. Um, and I see the tire flying across the air. And then all of a sudden you just started hearing gunfire and bullets whizzing past your truck. So we started returning fire. And with that truck kind of inoperable, we were just stuck in place. I think all totaled it was 13 hours. I can still remember the bullets just whizzing by. Um, that's a sound I'll never, I'll never forget. We landed in El Paso, uh, Fort Bliss. That looks just like Afghanistan. It's desert. Um, there's mountains kind of in the background. Kabul sits in the bottom. Uh, it's like a bowl. It was weird. It didn't feel like we were home flew and I saw the Cascade Mountains. We landed in Redmond and we had a homecoming ceremony. But once I saw those, the Cascades, the three sisters really, then I knew I was home. In 2020, um, I started talking with the Air National Guard. I found an open position um, there uh, in the life support. We are responsible for maintaining, uh, inspecting and fixing uh, the life support equipment for the pilots. I started really getting that itch again for being more of service to people. I had a good friend of mine for years have been poking me at the sheriff's office, was hiring and I should apply. I was offered a position as a patrol deputy and I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. So now I work for the Deschutes County Sheriff's Office as a patrol deputy. You never know how you can help someone, but uh, we had a horrible accident near the high school where two 17-year-olds and an 18-year-old was killed in a car crash. One of the parents just had, you know, the way they vented was just to, to lash out somewhat physically, and I just let her just pound on my chest, you know, for a few minutes because that's what she needed. I'm doing this job for that for that reason is is to be that whatever for someone as much as I can. You know, I can't fix everything, I can't solve everything, uh, but just being there, hopefully as a 
either a voice of reason or they just got that calming voice um, in the midst of chaos and to help. <laughs>